I officially welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about CBT and IELTS. Most people have been reaching out to me trying to find out if it's appropriate to write the CBT first or the IELTS first. So in this video, I'm going to share my opinion on that. And I believe that by the time you are done watching this video, you'll be able to make a concrete decision as to whether you are writing the IELTS first or the CBT first. So if you are interested in this video, then come with me. So before I start, let me put this disclaimer across. And whatever I'm going to say here is from my opinion. Basically, I just want to share with you what you have to know to make an informed decision. And you can decide to follow whatever I say here or just abandon it, okay? Alright, so I'm going to talk to you about CBT and IELTS. I mean, which one to write first? Based on three things. And I believe that by the time I'm done talking to you about these three things, you'll be able to decide as to whether you're writing the CBT first or the IELTS first. But I'll be rest assured that I wrote the IELTS first and I will probably give you the reason why I wrote the IELTS first. So to even dive much into the three concepts I want to share with you, let me share with you my story. You see, most people who have been following my story with regards to uh, working as a nurse in the UK, I remember in one of my videos I said that I had the process the hard way um, because I didn't know the next step I had to take. Um, I, all I knew was to start with the IELTS and after the IELTS I didn't know the next step to take. That is why I had to basically write the IELTS. Maybe if I had known that after IELTS I have to write CBT, then I would have written the CBT first before the IELTS. Oh, no, whichever one you write first is good, but it's up to you to basically know the consequences or the push and cons each one carries. And that is what I want to share with you in this video. Okay, so starting with the first one, when you consider the IELTS and the CBT, the first thing or the first consideration you have to look at is the expiry date. So if you want to write the IELTS first, you know the expiry date. If you want to write the CBT first, you know the expiry date. Fortunately, the expiry date for the IELTS and the CBT is two years. What this means is that once you write your IELTS and pass, or once you write your CBT and pass, you have two years to use it for whatever reason you wrote these exams. And that is very, very important. So here, the expiry date is the same. You have two years to basically use your IELTS results for whatever reason you wrote, and you have two years to use your CBT results for whatever reason you wrote. So that is something you must take note. So if you want to write your IELTS first, know that it lasts for two years. And if you want to write your CBT first, know that it lasts for two years so by the time or within the space of two years you should use it for the reason which you wrote now, once you have considered that let's look at the second thing that is the difficulty level you see we are different people and i always say that um, to describe something as difficult or easy depends on the person concerned so i may say that cbt is difficult depending on how i perceive it to be another person may see cbt to be very easy but all in all what i want to say is that Looking at the difficulty level of these two exams, I would say that IELTS is um, difficult as compared to the CBT. The reason is that most people who write CBT pass as compared to IELTS. I mean, let me put it this way. Most people who write CBT pass in the first attempt as compared to IELTS. So this means that there is no highest assurance that you writing the IELTS on the first um, attempt, you will pass. Most people who do pass, either pass on the second attempt or the third attempt. So looking at the difficulty level, um, I would say that the CBT is much easier to pass in the first attempt, and that's the second thing I want you to consider. So in actual sense, I would say that the IELTS is the stumbling block. It's actually what stops people from actually perceiving their dream of working in the UK. So once you are able to conquer the IELTS, you should be very sure that the CBT is just a peanut to care. So um, basically, you just have to consider that as well. And the last thing I would want to talk about is 100% assurance. And what do I mean by 100% assurance? You see, looking at these two exams, I mean the IELTS and the CBT, there's one that if you write, you have the assurance that your process of, I mean, your dream of working in the UK is rest assured as compared to the other. So which one of these puts your dream ahead of you? Let's see. When you write the CBT first and you pass, the assurance that you'll be having the opportunity to work in the UK is very low as compared to the IELTS. The reason is that, as I mentioned, it is easy to pass the CBT as compared to the IELTS. So people who are facing the IELTS, and past have the hope and the zeal that um, their processes to work in the UK is rest assured because IELTS is one of the stumbling blocks. It is a basic stumbling block that needs to be cleared to be rest assured that I mean you are good to go. Okay, so CBT it's good even though it's part of the process you have to take to finally get yourself in the UK. But once you pass your CBT, the assurance that you are passing the IELTS is very low. So most people write the CBT go into IELTS and basically pass on the second or third attempt. That is not to say that if you are writing the CBT or if you want to write the CBT, 
um, before the IELTS, you are going to pass IELTS on the second or third attempt. It doesn't happen that way. But the majority pass IELTS on the second attempt. And that is something you have to consider. So what I'm trying to mean is that putting all these factors in place, I think it's better to clear the stumbling block, I mean the major stumbling block, before you work on the lighter one. Okay. So to me, it's better you move away the bigger spec or the bigger stumbling block before you tackle the lighter one. So if you're able to clear your IELTS, then the possibility that you are passing your CBT is very high. Me writing the IELTS first and then passing in the first attempt was one of the uh, motivation to actually help me go into the CBT and I mean, I was able to sail through. So I want you to consider all these three factors I've talked about and weigh them as such to make an informed decision as to whether you're writing the IELTS first or the CBT first. So know that the first one is the expiry date for both exams, which I said um, is the same, two years expiry date, okay? And the second one is the difficulty level. So it's up to you if you want to tackle the easy one before the difficult one, then it's up to you. Or if you want to tackle the difficult one before the easy one, it's up to you. The decision is up to you to make. And the last one is 100% assurance, and that I have explained, okay? So passing the IELTS gives you 100% assurance that your process or your zeal to work in the UK is coming to light as compared to the CBT. So, bringing everything I have said under one umbrella, what I want you to understand is that if you are writing the CBT first, then you should try as much as possible to pass IELTS within the space of two years. Otherwise, your CBT will expire, and when you have passed IELTS, you have to rewrite. So, thank you very much for having time to watch this video. I have more to share with you, nursing in the UK, and any other thing you have to know to basically um, enhance your nursing skills or your career abroad. So to have more of this, um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So I hope to see you in my next video.